Welcome, <coughs> welcome back, guys, uh, to our third segment where we'll be talking about the Carolina Hurricanes and following this picture and following this event, what their offseason, what their future really holds in store for them. Doing a little bit of deep dive into this team, you have, uh, on paper, you had a great team last year. However, you have, I'm going to start uh, where I usually would end and talk about their goaltending situation because I think that this is the one that, I think that this is the most interesting um, part of this team. You have Frederick Anderson, who has a year left after this offseason. He's uh, still on contract through the end of next year. Um, he's 34 years old. He didn't look amazing, and I believe that it might be time for the Carolina Hurricanes to move on from him. He isn't taking up much of your cap. That's the problem. It, it doesn't really make sense uh, to not have him, but I believe $3.4 million is still money that you need. Kochekov... Uh, proved to be a good starter uh, you see it in this picture him over 52 that's uh, their backup goaltender you also have Spencer Martin who is their backup goaltender but I believe Kochekov um, should probably be their starter moving forward I believe he's been playing uh, he played very well when I saw him in the postseason against the New York Rangers I believe he played in that game five that they ended up winning and then they went back in game six to Frederick Anderson um, so I, he, he does have a no trade clause. So maybe waivers, maybe buyout. I don't know. I, I don't think that he, $3.4 million might be a little bit too much for him to still be on the roster at. Then, <clears throat> sure. then for the Carolina Hurricanes, you have a fantastic, uh, defensemen who need new contracts. Brady Shea, who, Brett Pesci, both of them have uh, said that they want to resign. They want to stay in Carolina, uh, and 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 I don't know how much of a pay cut they're willing to take to take to to, to do it. You have a UFA in Anthony D'Angelo who looks like that's just going to be a walk. It looks like uh, Tony D'Angelo is heading to the free agency market. Um, Jalen Chatfield, who I believe will go to the free agency market. Uh, Dylan Coughlin, he is an RFA for um, for the Carolina Hurricanes. I believe that they, they'll probably re-sign him and use him as their sixth defenseman on this roster. Uh, I don't know what their prospect pool has for them as far as defensemen go, but just on their roster, they're going to probably use him as a seventh D-man. So, you still have uh, on on contract. You have Ronan Seeley, who I believe will be in the AHL next year. Scott Morrow, who is on an entry level contract, he'll probably still be in the AHL next year. Brent Burns, who is thirty nine years old, not getting any younger, making up taking up five and five and a quarter million dollars. You have Jakub Slavin, who is 30 years old, taking up five and a quarter million dollars. Both of these guys are on contract through next year. And then Dmitry Orlov, who is 32, taking up almost eight million dollars. So you have 20 million dollars tied into basically three defensemen there. That is a lot of money for the production you're getting out of these guys. Uh, it's you're probably going to want to move on from Dmitry Orlov and use that money to re-sign Brady Shea, Brett Pesci, who deserve it way more than Dmitry Orlov do. Uh, and as far as the forwards go, you have Tavo Teravina needs a new contract. Stefan Nesson needs a new contract. Jordan Martinuk, or Jordan Martinuk, who needs a new contract. Jake Gensel needs a new contract. Jake Gensel said that he wants to stay in Carolina. Uh, he was a trade deadline accusation who looks to want to resign with the Hurricanes. You have Ryan Suzuki is an RFA, Martin Nietzsche is an RFA, Seth Jarvis who is an RFA, uh, Jack Drury who is an RFA, Maxime Comtois who is an RFA. That is a lot of forwards. What is that? Nine? Nine forwards who need new contracts. Nine forwards, two defensemen you're looking to resign. That's 11 skaters. All right. What is? Why is that a problem? Right now they have twenty-seven million dollars. You need to 
put 11 you need to re-sign 11 skaters with 27 million dollars that's a little bit scary and it's not like these guys are gonna really want to take pay cuts here you're talking about brady shea brett pesci i say brady shea probably gets around six million dollars uh that would make sense for him he is a top 4d man uh that that's about where i would have him six million dollars for brady shane brett pesci is probably around that five million maybe four million dollar mark 29 years old proved to proven playoff producer uh so you have you're gonna want to resign those two guys because they are committed to this team and they are good players and they're defensemen that you need so you have what is that about 10 million dollars we'll call it uh going on the cheap side here 10 million dollars 19 million dollars left right table teravinen stefan essen jordan martinuk and jake ensel those are your ufa forwards those are four ufa forwards who do you want to resign who do you want are who are you willing to let walk well jordan martinuk is an assistant captain i wouldn't let an assistant captain go uh and i think that the carolina hurricanes share that sentiment so what does that look like for Jordan Marinook? I I don't know what contract he was on before. Uh, actually, I'm going to see if I could figure that out here. Jordan Marinook was on... Um, let's see here. Before this, he was on a $1.8 million contract. Okay. I think that you'll get him for around the same amount there. Let's say $2 million because he'll want a little bit more. He's $31. He'll want a little bit more here. So $2 million for Jordan Marnook. Tebo Teravainen. Now, this is the one that's very scary. He was on upwards. Yep. He was on a $5.5 million contract. Uh, for Tevo Teravainen, he's only gotten better and he's 29 years old. In his prime, he was on a $5.5 million contract. I would say he's looking for about seven. So you got two million dollars Jordan Marnook, seven million dollars Table Teravine, and that's nine million dollars. Stefan Nesson, he's probably around two million dollars as well. You're at eleven now. Jake Gensel, that's the one that's very, very interesting. In Pittsburgh, Jake Gensel was making six million over the last five years. I don't know what he wants to do. That's the one that's very interesting to me. You have before uh, Jake Gensel, you have $21 million probably gone because you do want to keep these guys. You want to keep Jor Mark Nook, Stefan Nesson, Tavo Teravainen, uh, Brett Pesci, and Brady Shea. Those five guys are kind of cores of this team, and they are proven to be good. Um, and they aren't the reason you're losing games. So you're looking at about $21 million in those five guys, I would say. That leaves you with six and a half million dollars for six and a half million dollars for Jake Gensel, Ryan Suzuki, Martin Nichas, Seth Jarvis, Jack Drury, and Maxime Comtois. Six guys, seven and a half million dollars. Jake Gensel is gonna want probably around five, is my guess. I think he'll take the pay cut. Uh, that's a million dollars off of his last uh earn or last contract i think that that makes a little bit of sense that'll put him um right around that yes barry kokaniemi contract that they have uh who's at 4.8 you have andre sveshnikov at 7.75 um and i think that that's where he's gonna belong really right underneath those guys so for the Carolina Hurricanes, you're looking at Jake Gensel, probably $6 million, and you might be okay with that. Now you have $0, though. So $5, uh, $1 million. Uh, that's enough to sign one RFA. You're going to put that in Seth Jarvis. We'll see if he goes for that cheap. He proved in these playoffs that he is ready to take a step. Uh, he might just sign a one-by-one, one, though. One-by-one, uh, one, he'll still be in RFA next year. Um, and they'll he'll still be an rfa next year he's been amazing for the carolina hurricanes and they'll have one, uh, you know you'll get brent burns off your books who's gonna absolutely retire at the end of next year if he does play through another season jacob slavin who is not going to be or is going to be a ufa next year he'll either take a pay cut or he'll leave for the carolina hurricanes 
So a one by one for Seth Jarvis makes sense for me, at, or even just keeping him on a two way contract if he is willing, keeping that free of the cap. Um, you'll be able to pay probably a Ryan Suzuki that other two way contract. Um, so you, now you have a 25 year old Martin Nietzsche's, a 25 year old Maxim Comtois, and a 24 year old Jack Drury to. Um, to resign, and it's I'm really looking at Dmitry Orlov. It's probably the odd man out here. If you can sell that, or if you can trade away that 7.750 million dollar contract for this 32 year old defenseman, it's only one more year. So any contender with money should be able to take that on. We're looking at maybe a Vancouver Canucks here. We're looking at maybe a um, I, I don't know who has a lot of cap space off the top of my head. Uh, that is contending maybe a Devils, maybe a Senator, is someone like that who who thinks that that could put him put them over the edge. Um, I think that Dmitry Orlov, Dmitry Orlov cannot be on this team if they want to keep all of these players. And of course, they do want to still get better here. They they only are a second round team, so they're they're only a second round team with not adding anybody um uh, so they're gonna want to add somebody that means you're gonna need to move on from some money we're looking at probably the three and a half million dollars in freddie anderson and the 7.75 oh and dimitri orlov that frees up 10 million dollars you could probably use two million of that to make sure all of your guys are completely signed and then that leaves you with a good nine million dollars to really splurge out on somebody uh you have all of your picks for the next or you have all your picks in this draft you have your first and second in next year's and first and second in 2026 you can go out and get a pretty decent piece for that uh and i think that they're really looking at maybe a top six forward to pair up with you know you have sebastian ajo andre sveshnikov Yes, Barry Kokaniemi is probably your second line center, um, and then you probably have Jake Gensel on your first line right wing, uh, Table Teravainen on your first or second line left wing. So you're looking really about a uh, second line right wing guy. Maybe I would add to this team to make sure you kind of push it over the edge. Maybe Seth Jarvis could be that guy, but I would say that that's probably better save for the third line. So I think that the Carolina Hurricanes. First off, first order of business need to re-sign their guys. Second order of business, they need to go out and get probably a second line winger. uh, Either left or right, whichever one. You could probably work your team around that. Third off, you don't need the picks that you have. I would say use those to to either help you get the second line right winger or to uh, get better depth defensemen. If you do want to move on to Mitri Orlov, you'll be able to have Jakob Slavin, Brady Shea, Brett Pesci be your cornerstones of your deep, and then have Brett Burns, and then a couple more def- def- bottom two defensemen who can really carry this team. The Carolina Hurricanes are not in that scary of a position. They don't need to sell their entire team, but this is a very pivotable, p- pivotable, Pivot toll off season for this team for this squad. If they really do, uh, I mean, they've had Stanley Cup hopes for a very long time. They do re-sign their head coach Rod Brendamore, who brings that championship um, uh, caliber team to Car- Carolina. Uh, so I'm going to be very interested to see what they do in the off season, and I'll, that will be definitely one that I follow along very closely for you guys. So with that being said, we're going to get into our fourth segment after I take my third break of the night, where we'll be talking about Alexander Barkov and him winning the Selkie. Uh, thank you.